of wind today. Lots of fallen trees too around the area. And what did I read today? How about this one? Would you actually believe this is legitimate? Because in a lot of cases, they don't end up being, I guess, accurate. This one says, drone came within 50 feet of crashing into British Airways flight from Heathrow. Report reveals, a suspected drone came within 50 feet of crashing into a British Airways plane as it departed Heathrow for India. A report has revealed, the incident on February 26th at 10,500 feet could be the highest ever near miss recorded between a BA plane and a drone. 10,500 feet again. Does that make you a little skeptical whether or not it was a quote drone? It says the near miss just before 2.50 p.m. involved a Boeing B7878 Dreamliner carrying more than 200 passengers. According to an aviation safety report, the flight had departed Heathrow minutes earlier for Chennai in India. The UK Airprox Board, which reviews safety incidents, rated the near miss as a category A risk the riskiest level. A report said the pilot looked up to see an object approaching dead ahead. They were confused as it was not an aircraft or a bird and they were startled. The report said the object was closing rapidly and then clearly apparent as a medium-sized quadcopter with four downward-facing blue lights. It approached almost head-on, slightly to the right-hand side. The pilot informed air traffic control who reported the pilot was seeing a drone with blue lights straight down the middle. The controller informed pilots of aircraft on the same flight path so they could keep an eye out for the drone. Is Again, is a medium-sized drone, for example, that high up in the air? I can see if they say it's like a humongous one, like a military one or something like that, but that makes it, I guess, a little less believable in that regards anyways. And it goes on to say, drones are normally legally restricted to flying at a maximum height of just 400 feet. The report concluded the board considered that the pilot's overall account of the incident portrayed a situation where a definite risk of collision had existed. It comes after a separate UK Airprox board report revealed that a suspected drone came within just a meter of a plane's wingtip while approaching Heathrow at 1100 feet in March 2nd. That incident was also reported to air traffic control and the local police came to consult with the captain when on the ground. It was not clear which airline the pilot was flying for. Well, again, would you actually believe this report that it was a quote drone at that height? I don't know. And here in Canada, it seems like they're making it an official where online streaming platforms are going to have to pay a tax of sort, I guess, to contribute to Canada's broadcasting system. Like it says here, CRTC requires online streaming services to contribute to Canada's broadcasting system. The CRTC is taking a major step forward in the implementation of the Online Streaming Act, formerly Bill C-11. The Online Streaming Act, which amended the Broadcasting Act, requires the CRTC to modernize the Canadian broadcasting framework and ensure that online streaming services make meaningful contributions to Canadian and Indigenous content. Immediately after the new legislation was adopted, the CRTC published a regulatory plan and launched four public consultations, including one on what base contributions online services must make to support the Canadian broadcasting system. During the consultation on contributions, the CRTC received more than 360 detailed submissions and held a three-week public hearing where it heard from over 120 groups. Based on the public record, the CRTC is requiring online streaming services to contribute 5% of their Canadian revenues to support the Canadian broadcasting system. These obligations will start in the 2024 to 2025 broadcast year and will provide an estimated $200 million per year in new funding. So I don't know if this is going to be good overall because what happens if this, I guess, tax or funding is just favoring certain groups of people per se, not just every quote Canadian. And with that thought, actually, this was actually really interesting, kind of related to that topic because here anyways, there's often a lot of talk on how the CBC should be defunded because they get so much taxpayer money, for example, to do things like the news. But recently, there's this huge controversy as they decided not to air the Stanley Cup playoff games with the Edmonton Oilers and they actually made it to the finals this year. So people are wondering why and with that they're saying, for example, defund them again, I suppose. As you know, hockey is a big deal here in Canada and it says the Edmonton Oilers punched their ticket to the Stanley Cup finals on Sunday night, but some conservative politicians and mystified hockey fans weren't in the mood to celebrate. Instead of watching the game for free on the CBC, which has the rights to the playoffs, 
fans had to pony up for Sportsnet or miss the game entirely, anyone tuning in to their local CBC channel was greeted with the Canadian Screen Awards, which was followed by a Just for Laughs comedy special. The Edmonton Oilers are the only Canadian team left in the playoffs. Despite receiving $1.4 billion in taxpayer dollars this year, CBC decided not to air the Oilers game, wrote Tim O'Paul, the Conservative Deputy Leader and Edmonton Area MP. And this makes it worse, because according to this, while they didn't air the Edmonton Oilers games, they actually did air the Eastern Finals, which had teams based in the US, the New York Rangers and the Florida Panthers. So how would you... Uh, I guess explain that. It says the CBC has broadcasted the NHL playoffs every year since 1973, so why won't the Toronto CBC execs bother to air the Oilers' crucial games as they look to bring the Cup home to Canada for the first time since 1993? Wrote Layla Goodbridge, a Fort McMurray MP who also called for the public broadcaster to be defunded. Now, one of the theories actually is it could be political on the reason why they didn't do this. It says, it wasn't just politicians and hockey fans ripping the CBC for the decision. Sports commentators expressed bewilderment that in a year when so many Canadian teams were viable contenders for the Stanley Cup, the CBC didn't make sure that all games were available to Canadians. So is that a possibility in your mind where the broadcaster is simply trying not to shine a light on a province that goes against, I suppose, their supporters or donors, for example, in Parliament, because that would, I guess, look kind of bad, huh? Like, hey, let's celebrate these guys, quote, I guess, views, when realistically, they're not the ones helping us to get funding. Like, that's the, I guess, controversy at the moment in theory. Would you think that's possible in this case? Or is it just some executive being, I don't know, really silly in terms of making a decision like this? And this is a great example too when it comes to that previous story about I guess taxing online streaming platforms would the funding go to broadcasters like this for example because there's some kind of favoritism and at the end of the day they don't actually give people what they want to see overall. <laughs>
Alright, see you guys later.